Hey everyone, hey everyone, I am back, I'm back. Um, I just finished working and um, the Holy Spirit was talking to me as I was finishing up. And um, I just had to bring this word to you guys. Um, I believe it will help some people and I believe it will encourage some people that have questions about um, what could be going on in their life. So let us pray before we bring this word forward. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We plead the blood of Jesus against mind-binding spirits that will come to hinder the word that is going forth um, for your people, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for everyone that comes to this channel, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that, you know, that everyone comes before you with a humble heart, Lord God, ready to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to his people, Father God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit-led direction, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the moments that we choose to spend with you, Lord God, denying ourselves from the things that we want to do and doing the things that we need to do, doing the things of the Spirit, denying ourselves the things of this world, Lord God, and carrying our cross. We thank you for the mercy and your grace, Father God, that you put upon our lives, Lord God. We thank you for called by grace ministry. Lord God, because we know that we are called by grace in the name of Jesus, by the grace and the love of God that God has for us in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the unmerited favor upon our lives, Lord God. We ask that you would anoint this word, Father God, in the name of Jesus, which would want to get through to your people, Lord God, to help them understand the attacks of the enemy. So we thank you for strategy. We thank you for a strategic word, Lord God, that shows us how to go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, as I was saying, um, I just finished up working. I'm in my salon, studio, um, or what have you. And the Holy Spirit was speaking to me as I was finishing up with my client. And a person's face came before me, and I just realized that that person, I saw a glimpse of that person actually, I think, in a dream that I had last night. It wasn't a long dream, but the person appeared before me. Um, and my spirit had been a little grieved because this is a friend who I was friends with for over 20 something years and our friendship fell out. Um, their true colors showed and the enemy um, allowed me to see, um, I mean, not the enemy, the Lord allowed me to see what this person was thinking towards me the whole time that they were around me. And again, we've been friends for, we had been friends for over 20 years at that time. So it was almost like a death when um, I and this person fell out. I couldn't understand what I did. I had to search within myself. I was like, Lord, please show me. Show me what I did, you know, to make the person feel the way they felt about me. Um, they said a lot of hurtful things that shocked me because I felt like I was a genuine friend from where I, you know, the aspect that I was coming from. But again, when things like that happen and people are hurt, the first thing we should do as believers is ask God to show us ourselves. Ask God to show us where we might have made a mistake in the situation. I do remember the last time I saw this person, um, this was back in 2020, they came to get, um, was it back in 2020? Or like the end of... I don't know. It was around that time. But anyway, they came to get their hair done by me. And they came to visit or whatever. And they decided to stay in a hotel. And before they left um, to go to the hotel, they asked me if I had a candle. I kind of thought it was strange because I was like, why would you need to burn a candle in the hotel? But I know the person smoked. And so I don't know if maybe um, they were going to smoke in the hotel or whatever and they wanted to burn the candle to get the smell out i don't know but long story short i gave the person a candle but to this day it never sat right with me okay um i do know the person had an issue with my marriage and the person that i was married to because i guess um they know some of the things that i have been through in my marriage and stuff like that and so they they were divorcee they are divorcee and I think that us being friends, some people are used to you um, moving like them. So, you know how misery loves company. And certain decisions that people make for themselves, you know, sometimes they want you to jump on the bandwagon. You know what I'm saying? But that's why you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. Meaning you're working out just your, your salvation with the Lord. You and him have a 
personal relationship. So you're going to hear, because the Bible says, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. So you're going to hear the voice of the Lord and you're going to take that over man. You understand what I'm saying? You have to go the direction that God sends you in because he has the plan for your life, not man. He knows, he knows where he's trying to take you and things like that. So at the end of the day, um, you know, I, we, I, I had to listen to the voice of the Lord. So not too long after that person, well, actually after, right after that person left, there was a vibe about the person that was off. And me, you know, I'm just living my life. I'm doing my thing. And I just noticed that it was just some real negativity. And the negativity just came out of nowhere. Long story short, the friendship was severed. Like I said, I was hurt and everything like that. But this person's face, face keeps coming towards me. And I haven't spoken to this person since 2020, literally. So... I'm like, why does this person's face, face keep coming before me? And every time I hear a message on witchcraft, every time I hear a message or anything, this person's face keeps coming before me. And again, last night in a dream, this person's face came before me. So the Holy Spirit was showing me, the Holy Spirit was, you know, just showing me that. And I want to share this with you because I need you to understand this. There are people that are mad at you because of the direction that you're choosing to go in the choices that you make you know that you are chosen by god to live your life a certain way and because you're not following men the there are people in your life there's friends family whoever they are mad because you chose kingdom business over worldly business you chose to go the direction and the path that god has called you to whatever it may be there are those of you who people are mad because you chose to stay married to your spouse. People are mad because you're choosing to take care of your kids and focus on your family and stay the course. People are mad because you're choosing to forsake the world and choose God, choose a personal relationship with God, choosing ministry, choosing different things over the path that they might want you to go. Those of you who might be entrepreneurs or, you know, starting your own business, and, and, and especially if you're young, you might have parents and people that are talking about you are making you feel bad because you're not choosing to go the route of college, because you're not choosing to go and become a doctor, a lawyer, a uh, or anything like that you might have people in your family that look down on you because that was a family tradition that was something that they think that they wanted you to continue in but because you choosing to have a personal relationship with God and God is telling you to go a certain direction people might not understand it they might look at you as being a traitor they might look at you as somebody that's breaking a family tradition in all actuality that's what God has called you to People are mad, yes, but I need you to understand that it's the spirit within them that does not like what you're doing because you're breaking things off of your family, okay? You're breaking generational curses. You're called to minister. That is your ministry. The Bible tells us, okay, let me give you the scripture. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6.33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you forsake the world, when you choose God, when you choose kingdom business over the things of this world, God will provide all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not only that, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. Okay? You have to forsake this world. You know what I'm saying? We we have to we have to forsake this world and do the things as Christ ambassadors. We have to do the things that God has called us to. It is imperative because obedience is better than sacrifice. Only God the Father knows what we need to do and how we need to operate for certain things to fall in line with what He has for us. So you have to understand that people are gonna be mad. Okay, people are going to be mad because now it's time for you to choose. Choose this day who you're going to serve. You can't choose, you, you can't choose, you, you know, God is a jealous God. 
You understand what I'm saying? And being that we're living in the last of the last days, we're going to start to really see the hand of God, the move of God in certain situations where people, non-believers, are going to have to believe when they see how things begin to fall in place for you because because you chose to serve your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you know, I'm, I'm coming because God has put this on my heart. You know, he's showing me, he's showing you that there's things that we have to do according to his will and according to his word for our life. Those of you who are struggling with family, you're struggling with your marriages, you're struggling with your children, you're saying, I'm putting all this work, I'm putting all this work, and it seems like you're not getting the results that you've been looking for or what God has promised you. We know this is the season now where a lot of those things are going to come into fruition. You understand what I'm saying? God gave me that word about his, your prayers coming up um, as a memorial to him. You understand what I'm saying? Like all that is before God now. So that's why he's saying don't grow weary and well-doing. People are going to be mad. It's okay. It's okay. Let them be mad. They have to find their own way. Hopefully, that as, as God continues to knock, they'll open the door for him. You understand what I'm saying? I'm sharing this word humbly before you because, honestly, I, I you know, sometimes I'm nervous because I'm like, God, I want to make sure this is you. I don't want to come and I don't want to sell nobody no dreams. I don't want to come here with no made-up word. I want to be sure that this is God. You understand what I'm saying? And what he's saying is that people are going to be mad. Expect that in this season. Expect that. Because they're going to be looking at you like, who do you think you are that you feel like you could go this way? I had to go this way. I chose this. I did this. And now you just, you, you ain't even do what I did. So how you get here? I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. Because the world says you need to do things a certain way to get things a certain way. When God says, all you got to do is follow me. Seek my kingdom first, and everything else is going to be added unto you. Follow me. I know what you need. You understand what I'm saying? Jeremiah, what is it? Jeremiah 29. I want to pull these scriptures up to you guys so you can go, you know what I'm saying, and spend time um, uh, with God yourself. For I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You understand what I'm saying? To give you an expected end. So God is saying that there's an expected end. Is his will good? God's will is good and it's acceptable. It is the thief that cometh not before to steal, kill, and destroy. That's John 10.10. 10. It is the thief that cometh not before to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord has come that we may have life and that we may have it in abundance. An abundant life. That's what God desires for us. But how are we going to know the expect know what the expected end is when we don't know the word of God? You, we have to go back and understand that why he sent his only son to die on the cross for us. That sacrificial lamb, he who knew no sin became sin for us. So at the end of the day, the expected end is restoration, redemption. The expected end is healing. Because the thoughts and plans that God had towards us is for, a not, for us not to keep going through what we went through in the Old Testament. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to live in the finished work. We need to live in the finished work. That is what the expected end is. To live in the finished work. The completed work. The completed work that was on the cross. For your family. For your friends. But you have to understand that following God, you're going to make some enemies. But they're not enemies of you. They're enemies of the God in you. So you have to know that if they're enemies of the God in you who has completed the work... We're standing in a place of victory. We're standing in a place of saying, you know what? They might not like me. This person might be. And listen, it's all witchcraft and rebellion. These people are coming against you. They're praying for your downfall because they didn't think that you should have stayed with this person, not knowing that that's your kingdom spouse. That's who God sent you to cover because somebody prayed for them. But yet they're praying for you to get out of something that God called you to. God says, your ways are not my ways. 
So who are we? That's why we have to be careful of the little foxes that spoil the vine. We have to be careful because a lot of times what might not look right like a favorable situation is something that God is working out for his glory. Not for us to get the glory, but for God to get the glory. We want things to be perfect. We want our marriages to just be smooth sailing. And then when something happens, that's why people break apart because they don't know how to weather any type of storm. You're not weathering it by yourself. You Somebody has to know God and know who God is. Somebody has to have a personal relationship God with God in that situation. To be strong in their faith. To stand on the word for their family. You might be that person. You might very well be that person. And because people don't understand why you weather in certain storms where you could turn around and walk away and just say the heck with this and just go and then just live in a world and every, be in a wayward state and everywhere the wind blows, so do you. That's not what God intended for your life. He said, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. And so what we have to do while the enemy attacks us is we have to learn to stand on what God has promised us because he's not a man that he should lie. And we have to understand in this last, these last days, you know what I'm saying? Yes, we're going to feel it. But the persecution is great, but never greater than the glory of God. I heard, uh, I think it was Mark Sharona and Juanita Bottom years ago. I want to say about, oh my gosh, almost 20 something years ago. Um, and it was a different type of anointing on TBN at that time. That's when I used to watch it back then. It was a different type of anointing before they allowed the world to creep in and kind of infiltrate. Um, she was saying as a prophet, the, per the persecution is great, but never greater than the glory of God. Because when God finishes and when, he, when the Holy Spirit comes in and he cleans up certain things, the God will get the glory. Understand me. That God will get the glory. That's why we have to deny ourselves. I was listening to the lady um, who I listened to on here, Ruach of Life. And she was talking about Abraham and Sarah and how God gave Abraham this prophecy. And he said, you're going to be the father of many nations. And, you know, um, how they began to look at their body, look at their age. And then Sarah kind of laughed at the word that was given because she was like, how, how is that going to happen? You know what I'm saying? Looking at her body and looking at her and Abraham and just looking at the current circumstance. So she began to move in that situation and she decides to have him go and get a, um, some, somebody else pregnant that was not her. When God promised Abraham and Sarah, he gave them a word that they were supposed to stand on. And sometimes we interfere and then we drag the will of God out for our life. And so we seem like we've been going through things for 15 years, 16 years, 20 years, 30 years, however many years you're going through it. But you're not understanding you know what I'm saying? That you have to deny yourself. You know, yes, you have a vision of how you want things to be. Nobody's saying that God won't give you the desires of your heart. But in order for him to get the glory, you got to let it go his way. And sometimes you're going to be persecuted. Sometimes you're going to be treated badly. Sometimes that's just the enemy beating up on you, trying to give you, get you to quit, trying to give, get you to give up. But that's not what you, 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 you do. Because if Jesus would have walked down from the cross when they were spitting on him, uh, doing everything that they did to him, if he would have said, I, you know what, Father, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. <clears throat> we all have free will. But when you make that decision, and that decision is God, Jesus Christ, and nobody else. Living for God and doing what God has called me to. Because I know there's an expected end. We know that there's an expected thing. But you have to understand that people are going to be mad. They're going to be mad. They're going to be upset because you're choosing not to party no more. They're going to be upset because what God has for you to do is going to, it's rolling in. You understand what I'm saying? The doors are opening. Things are happening for you. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's what God has for you to do. And you have to constantly spend time with him to hear his voice, to know the direction that he's calling you to go in. Enough of being in this wayward state and just fly by night situations. What God has called you to, He's called you to. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and adds no sorrow. So don't allow people being upset with you and people. We cannot hold man into a, a, a higher in a higher standard than we hold our heavenly Father. It's the, when they say for God I live and for God I die That means die to the flesh To the flesh To what you want to do I thank you for that revelation God You know what I mean 
That means die to the flesh for what you want to do. So sometimes you're going to have to fast. You, you know, sometimes you're going to have to fast. Sometimes you're going to have to get quiet before God. Get rid of all these distractions, these phones, these TV shows, whatever. You know, we, we all have to work. We, there's things that we have to do, right? But when that's over, when we're doing the things that we have to do because we live in this world, when that's over, we have to choose Okay, I'm not going to hang out with my friends today. I'm not going to fellowship. I'm not going to that movie. I'm getting quiet before God. I'm denying myself what I want so I can hear the direction that God wants me to go in. I don't want to miss what God has for me. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time. We plead the blood of Jesus against any spirit of witchcraft that's trying to attack the work that you have us to do we rebuke it in the name of jesus you said that which we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and that which we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven in the name of the lord jesus christ the name above every name the name where demons tremble in the name of jesus we plead the blood of jesus over our past, our present, and our future. We plead the blood of Jesus over our families. We plead the blood of Jesus over our marriage, our marriages. We plead the blood of Jesus over our jobs and just the things that you've called us to, Lord God. The things that you have called us to, Lord God. Not the things that man has told us we need to do to get certain result results. But we thank you that what you've called us to, the plans that you have for us, Lord God, is covered under your mighty and precious blood. We thank you, Lord God, that you promise us the blessings of the Lord make it rich and adds no sorrow. We thank you that at the end of all that you called us to, Lord God, we will not only just be rich and materialistic, but we'll be rich in spirit, rich in our health, rich in our minds, rich in our emotions, rich in our relationships, rich in our parenting skills, rich in our financial decisions, all because we have the leading of the Holy Spirit. You said, God, that you would bring us a comforter. You had to go so that you could send us the comforter, Lord God. So we never be without. But help us to get quiet before you and deny ourselves what we want. Die to self through the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for helping us to deny ourselves what we want and to live for you. We shall seek ye first the kingdom of God and all those other things shall be added up to us we thank you for that right now Lord God we thank you for this moment in time we thank you for everybody that's a part of Core by Grace Ministries Lord God because that ministry belongs to you in the name of Jesus so we thank you for it Lord God in Jesus name we pray Amen